Yo, what's good, everybody? Hope you guys are having a good day. Um, thanks for all the love and support, by the way. We're over 700 subs now. Thank you guys so much. I really, really appreciate um, all the shares, the likes, the comments. Um, if you aren't followed or I mean, if you're not subscribed yet, um, please hit that hit that bell button. Is it a bell button? I don't even know. I'm not good at these intros. But yeah, go ahead and sub. Uh, I'm going to keep pushing out content. Um, and then if you guys aren't followed to my Twitter, go ahead and drop a follow there too. And you'll see whenever a new video drops. Um, anyways, yeah. So I got some good feedback from the Sunset Macro Breakdown video. So I'm going to go ahead and do another one today. I'm going to talk about Split. Um, and again, I'm going to kind of just like go through the map the same way that I did. I'm going to follow the same structure as the last video. Um, and the way that I started that one was just talking about how I would analyze new maps when they come out. Um, and then how I would let that analysis dictate what I think is strong on defense. What, by the way, look at, look at all of this. This is impossible to untangle. It's just so crazy. I need to buy a new one. I should get a wireless headset. Um, it, and let the analysis, you know, that I do on Valve Plant kind of dictate how I want to set up on the map or how I want to play defense. And how I want to play defense will kind of dictate what I think is super strong to do on attack as well. Okay? So, um, again, we're just going to count chokes here. Um, and we're going to look for chokes that lead to two choke points. Okay? Now... You'll kind of see on most maps, these choke points that lead to two separate chokes or pathways. These are going to be kind of the emphasis for defense to kind of stall or try to get some type of deep line on. Or it's going to be the emphasis <laughs> of the attacking team to default there to make sure that the enemy team loses the line or is not able to hold on to that space. Because at the end of the day on attack, what do you want? You want to have as many options as possible for your attacking teammates, right? On defense, what do you want? You want the attack side to have as little, as as few pathways to doing things on the map as possible, okay? So if we just count the chokes here, so we go B main and go here, here, right? Um, and we go mid, we go here, just a mid choke. And that leads to here and here, okay? And then we got the A choke, which leads to here and here, okay? And then you could also kind of treat this as a mini choke that would lead to here and here. There's also ones you can talk about on B, here and here, okay? Um, and really the big thing that I see here is this is a choke that leads to two pathways and this is another choke that leads to two pathways. And that's why you see in pro play, there's so much emphasis on attack side with kind of, Lots of teams will do this Viper wall to cut across or they'll go across with the jet uh, or their rays and the sky plus one to try to take control of this area because what they want to do early, as early as they can on the round, gain access to more pathways that they can abuse on the map. This makes defense harder for the other team, okay? So let's start with defense now, okay? Um, now, if I'm playing defense, traditionally on this map, what teams will do... And let's start by just identifying the deep lines on defense, okay? And again, just for those of you that haven't watched my other videos, a lot of the things that I talk about will kind of, it, you know, they'll reappear in later videos. Um, but I'll always try to do a good job of explaining things um, again so you guys don't have to book, go back and watch. But I do recommend watching back my older stuff if you haven't already. Deep lines are just sight lines that give you advanced information that will usually allow your team a couple extra seconds to rotate, right? The other thing that's important with these deep lines is you disallow the enemy team from getting super, super close to a choke and then being able to explode out of it. Because when teams can do that, when they can on attack, if you can get three guys out of this choke point before you get counter utiled, a lot of times you're gonna have success uh, taking the site because one, there's gonna be less people on the bomb site unless they've done like a silent stack. But then also, too, this person here is going to be caught with utility in their hands, and you're going to have a lot of your util dumped on them. They're not going to be able to counter util you properly, and usually they're going to die. Okay? So, what are the deep lines on this map? Okay? There's a couple. Uh, but really, the, the main two, uh, I guess there's kind of three. B main is a deep line. Okay? And it, comparing this to other maps, this is not very much of a deep line. But you can also use this as a line. So th these are like the two B lines that people mess with. 
generally the higher level you go, uh, people put more emphasis on this line than the other line, but this line is also very important. What are other things that we see here pretty frequently? You'll see the cipher came here, not so much anymore. More teams are putting it above here. So people actually have to be committed in the hallway when they break it, which means it's an easy swing for one of your backside players. If your omen wants to peek and then TP out, um, or you want to do a one-way cipher cage, but yeah, generally there's going to be more focus on B main, the higher up you go in ranked or in pro play and scrims even. Um, and again, the reason for that is when people go B, it's very, very, very rare that they go for a five man B hit unless there's some type of ults behind it because it's very easy to counter you till this choke with a raise nade. Raise usually plays B heaven. And if you don't bait the nade out in mid, it can be really hard to take B. Okay. But, um, so if people don't really B main five man exec that often, that usually means that they're going for a B split. Now, if you've seen my other videos, I've talked about how it's important for this B main player to realize that usually people are going up mid with numbers. So I've explained the defaults on this map. Generally, um, you're seeing something like this in mid, and then you see a lurker over at A, and you see like a Viper B main or something like that, right? Or swap these two. And usually you'll see the numbers go in mid because the numbers have access to different pathways that they can go. They can push pill pivot. And again, I've explained that in another video. Uh, the idea of push pull pivot is pushing one side up here to put pressure on these guys B to pull rotations from A and then pivot towards A where this guy would take a lurk timing. You could do the same thing um, going this way, pushing vents with this person coming this way to 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 uh to pinch to pull rotations from b and then going back up mail and then having your b player go here so that's another push pull pivot variation but what you want to do as this b player on defense is you read the situation for what it is okay i'm getting split on let me go ahead and smoke out b main maybe i get in the smoke maybe i can fight a 1v1 on this viper i can hold on to b main control and now in post plant, it's really, really hard for the enemy team to win out if they don't have B main control. Because guess what? There's not a ton of places to hide if you play against a team that has good lineups, uh, good util usage, right? Um, even omen blinding, like pillar or something like this. You know what I mean? It's really, really hard to sit on the site and be static on the site. A lot of times you're going to have people kind of, you know, trying to plant for here and then going into main and then rewrapping mid um even pushing spawn sometimes or holding on to be having control to start with okay so as a defender this this deep line on b main is super important because one you get information that okay it, well number one it's usually not a, a a huge pack of people that are coming back b main to you usually it's one to two people max because you, you know the 3x is usually in mid doing some type of mid control to bait out viper utility and um, that's another piece of utility that's super hard to deal with here is Viper mollies. Generally, Viper players are playing mid, and if they're if it's just a full five-man B hit, they can get a molly here with a nade, and it can just end the round for you, right? So uh, generally, the big, the big pack of agents is going to be in mid. There's usually going to be one to two people main. Sometimes it's worth taking the fight here and kind of trying to hold on to the space. So that's just a protocol that everybody has. And how do you make it comfortable for your player to do that? The, the way that you do that is you try to establish B main control at the start of the round, try to establish some type of info early with a jump spot of a TP uh, or, or whatever and taking control of the space. Because if you take control of the space e early, that means you can just focus on this choke, right? Uh, and we don't even have to worry about, you know, getting pinched like this because then they have to push into this choke on us, okay? So really that's, that's the important thing on defense for B site is Understanding this is a line and this is a line on a site top ramp is a line. This is a line These are really the only lines that really matter. The other ones that you'll see is people just jiggle jiggle in with their knife out here um, And people jiggle here with their knife out here. Th this one's a little risky though because it's kind of an easy easy pre-fire um, But yeah, those are those are pretty much the big lines. Okay now now that we've talked about um, You know this being a choke that leads to two and this being a choke that leads to two You'll see teams put a heavy emphasis on getting B main control early in the round without their Viper, okay? And their Viper's job is to stall this and then rotate, and then have one of the guys that set up this B player and B main 
to go up to be heaven. And now they're counter utiling, making sure that they're popping up their Viper Molly or their Viper orb and using their Viper Mollies to stall out the enemy dog because we want to bait as much utility. We understand as a, de as a defensive sided team, the more control we have over mid and the longer it takes the enemy team to get mid. And when I say get mid, I mean, get, get uh, events and mail. And the, the more utility that they have to use to, to, to actually take that space, the easier the round gets for us um, when we decide to nest onto site, okay? Now, one thing that I want to talk about real quick is just the util. Let's just use, like, the Sentinels comp um, as the example here. The actual util that the comp has to take space onto the sites later on in the round, if, if you force them to default a little bit, like, I'm just really talking about initiator utility, is not that great, right? They don't really have great utility for clearing out a ton of corners outside of the Viper Molly, right? And the Omen Blind. I guess the Raise Nate is good too. But it's not like you're dealing with the Breach um, or you're not dealing with the Fade or Sova Dart or anything like that. It's really hard for people to clear you late in the round when they have limited utility, right? So as a defensive team, what's really, really strong, and one thing that I see way too much uh, in ranked, is people will die for this space way way too often people will die for this space way way too often you need to be able to recognize the amount of utility that the other team has used in the round and kind of have a dynamic setup based on that if teams use their dog and they don't get male control and or mid control sometimes it's really sorry male control and and vent control sometimes it's really really hard for them to actually just like contact up and take the fights so a lot of times they'll just avoid it completely and they'll pivot back to B main or they'll go back over towards um, towards A. Other things that they'll do is contact up. But what you should do then is you'll play for info. Play for info and you play to nest. So again, to recap, you want to start the rounds by playing to stall this choke in mid, get control of B main, and then have some type of line on A if you can. If you can't have the line on A, typically you'll see your Sky player use their utility to trade Trade the, so the Viper will put the wall up here, right? And try to cross, or the Cypher will cage and try to cross. Sky's, Sky's job is then to determine, okay, is this guy alone? Is he faking the cross? Um, is it more than just the, the, the Cypher or the Viper? All of these things are important, right? So all of these things are happening at the same time. We're getting B main control at the start. Our Sky is responsible for dealing with this A lurk, right? And it might be Sky plus Cypher. Sometimes maybe Cypher, Cypher just has a cam here and we don't even have to worry about it because we're not tripping. We're not tripping if they walk across because they have to go all the way up to break our cam. And if they don't break our cam, guess what? Maybe we have info trips and we don't have to, we don't have to worry about it at all, right? So um, that's happening and then Viper stalling mid, okay? And then we're trying to, after we get B main control, we're trying to get into kind of a, a two, you know, two B heaven setup and maybe Sky comes back to ropes and then we have like a 3X fight in mid here. Sorry for all those squigglies. Um, but that's kind of like the name of the game when it comes to split early. Try to read where teams are defaulting early with their 3X, right, on defense, and you can kind of put your 3X there to deal with it or your Viper there to deal with it. One thing that's super oppressive on A is just an early Viper molly a lot of the time. It makes it really hard for the enemy team if they're defaulting A or you have your Viper top ramp and they molly this. But yeah, again, that, that's, pretty much, that's pretty much the focus, okay? Um, and again, the focus is to stall this choke because this choke gives them options to do this and this and this really right here is your push pull pivot zone if the t side gets control of this it can get really hard for you um and you sometimes you have to gamble stack sites unless you're you know cypher really helps you lose control of mid and not really worry about it too much because then you have your other utility up that gives you a lot of info um, and you can kind of stack away from the cipher, but generally if we can stall out mid and make them use utility here, it makes the rounds immensely, immensely, um, more easy to deal with. Okay. Um, okay. The next thing that I want to talk about on defense is this idea of fighting people in kill zones. Okay. And this goes hand in hand with this idea of having a dynamic defensive setup. And again, what I mean by dynamic is the way that you start the round is not how you finish the round or you dictate where you're, you know, 
Like, just because you start fighting for mid doesn't mean you need to die for mid. You can fall back into a more nested setup. But the reasoning behind falling back for a more nested setup should be related with how much time is left in the round, how much utility the enemy team has wasted, and how much remaining utility you still have. Okay, if you still have utility to counter util, you can stay and hold on to the space. If you've run out of utility and you've lost the battle in mid, then we want to fall back to a more nested setup where we're trying to fight people in kill zones. Okay, so let me talk about these kill zones. And this is a this is um, one of the most fundamental pieces in FPS sports, uh, FPS games, sports. I mean, it is a sport, but it, you know what I mean. And really, what a kill zone is is think about it as a a zone on the map where you're making the enemy run out into a position where they're open to a multitude of different angles that they have to worry about, okay? So, i.e., you're basically giving yourself the best possible chance at fighting them because they're worried about this, 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 up, down, left, right, center, whatever, right? You want people to run into these kill zones, okay? And this is a really good calm on a team-wide level to kind of introduce... Um, is when you're up numbers, if you just say kill zones, kill zones, kill zones, now your team can ha kind of have these predetermined zones on where we want to fight the enemy when they run in, okay? So let me just let me just show some kill zones for you guys, okay? This would be a kill zone, okay? Out in the open in B main, this would be a kill zone, right? But honestly, really a better kill zone is something like something like this because they have to worry they have to worry about like hell, rafter, you know, somebody pillar, uh, even Z potentially. Um, let's put some other ones down. Uh, like here is a kill zone. Verse, and then here is another kill zone. Really here, actually. Um, okay. And, and kill zone. And honestly, this kill zone extends like all the way out into here, right? Um, so these are like the main kill zones, okay, on this map, right? And... Um, and I guess we could we could say this one here. So what you want to do is when you're determining kill zones, just as an exercise for your team, is you want to think about what zone what zone people are fighting behind it that is not optimal. Okay. So if this if we say this is a kill zone, I'm gonna put the kills, I'm gonna put the the kill zone in white and I'm gonna say the bad zone, the the 50-50 zone in red, okay? here can you guys see why this the, taking fights when you're especially when you're up numbers or late in the round why taking fights in this zone here is bad because you have no trade there's no trade you want to fight people when they're out here because then they can get traded from this angle and they get you know even this angle right now if we do this if we do this same exercise over on a so we want to do our kill zone in white so we don't want to we don't want to include hell but we talk about like this whole area right here, right? Really, it's like that, okay? Now let's talk, let's determine which zone is not good, okay? Here. Okay, do you know what I mean? Because these guy, this guy hell can isolate these fights. This guy A main can isolate these fights. This guy right here can isolate the, the rafter swing, right? But, Anybody that's inside of this kill zone cannot isolate any of the fights. They can get killed from here. They can get killed from here. They can get killed from here. They can get killed from here, right? Um, same thing Same thing over here. Let's talk about uh, top ramp. This is a good kill zone, okay? Now, what is, the, what is the zone behind it that doesn't make any sense to hold? Any of this stuff right here because this they can isolate the fights, they can turn two angles into one. So when I say two angles into one, I mean, so this zone is dangerous because this person and this person can peek you and this person can peek you, right? Now, if you go, if you're standing back here and this person wants to swing you and this person wants to swing you, they have to swing out like this and now two angles turn into one, right? Or at least very close to, okay? Hopefully that makes sense, okay? So again, my defensive identity is get be, try to be, try your best to get some type of BMA in control or control the line at the very very least make sure you're getting some type of jiggle info here right and really i think jiggling with your knife out versus jump spotting is ideal because one they can't hear you 
two, it's just as easy to avoid dying, right? Uh, unless they go for like a hard pre-fire or they have an op. Um, but it also gets you the info. And as Omen, you can kind of stand here with your smoke ready to go up. So you change smoke form. And then the second you see somebody, you smoke it, you pull out your blind, and then they satchel on you, you blind them, right? But we get this. We try to get B main control, or we have this some type of info line on B. Our mid player is stalling early, trying to bait out utility. And then we're trying to rotate numbers into mid. Um, at least two people here to focus on mid. We can start with two B main and then one mid, but then we transition. Uh, into having two people mid and then on a our sky is dealing with the cross right trying to deal with this viper wall going up and then um, making sure that we are having some type of information on the lurk unless we have a cypher behind it which is totally fine if we have a cypher towards a we can start with the sky flash a and then kind of rotate into mid uh, and not really have to worry about a a lurks or anything like that until our cam is broken okay um okay last thing i want to talk about on defense um, God, these videos are going to be kind of long, actually. That's fine. Last thing I want to talk about on defense, really, um, is the idea of retaking, okay? Now, when you're retaking A, do, do you guys remember when I said it's really hard for the attacker side to actually play nested on the sites with numbers in post-plant? Uh, the same, the same reasoning can be said for why it's actually kind of hard to hold the sites because it's not the easiest to flood in and support Okay, and the reason for that is just the elevation, right? And the drop coming off of heaven. Same thing on B, the drop coming into hell. Unless you get a solid piece of counter util out on the choke, it can be really hard to force it through the smoke because there's always people playing anti-flash. There's usually some type of, of molly or nade up here, right? It can be really risky. So it can be hard for your teams to anchor, right, at the start of the round. So generally, you'll see a lot of people playing off A, or you'll see like your Cypher Insight with cages and a full setup. That's that's better to hold with, right, because you have some type of survivability. But it's really hard if you're playing like solo, uh, I don't know, solo sky on site, although you can flash for yourself over map or something like that. It's not the, it's not the easiest thing to do by yourself. So you'll see a lot of people kind of play off A, um, and when, when they retake, a lot of teams, what they'll do is they understand that the plant, the, the default plant is here or here, right? Um, generally anywhere where people can play it from heaven, right? So what do they do? As defenders, if you want to retake, it's really, really strong to maintain control of ramp as a, de as a defensive team, okay? Maintain control of ramp or at least go to dog reclear this find the info for it if we notice that there's a ton of people ramp then we can retake through screens and kind of smoke out heaven or we can just brute brute force fight it um, fight it to the death and determine whether or not we're going to win the round in the first 10 seconds of the retake and if you can't get kills here you just save your guns okay so retaking on a i would advise that most teams retake through ramp because if teams are planning in this zone you kind of Usually they'll have one person on site here, one person here, or one person here. So two to three people on site, and then it'll be one, uh, two people over here, right? Um, and so you want to fight these guys ramp because that is the biggest threat to you later on in post, okay? Um, sometimes going site and killing the people site still will lose you the round, especially if you're playing against Astra or Vipers that can molly or suck the bomb. So dealing with this makes it infinitely easier and then what can you do? You're retaking from here and you're potentially retaking from here. You don't have to worry about heaven anymore uh, because you've killed these guys ramp. And now these people on site are full sandwiched right left. Um, and, and that's really what you want, okay? So retaking on A, make sure we're trying to put some type of emphasis on holding on to ramp. Giving A is okay. We're not too worried about it. The other thing is that we can easily dump util onto the site super solid viper mollies you know here hell raise nade back right here or here right things of that nature um are very very strong okay um and as viper you can you pick up your orb here and molly what you know orb this off or whatever but yeah on a let's try to retake this way and then on b a majority of the time it, it really just depends um on what kind of plant they get if they get the good plant i think making sure that you have one person like late in be heaven or trying to clear out this lurk early and then playing for flank makes a lot of sense 
Um, the other thing that is good is being able to smoke the bomb off. Uh, so you smoke bomb off here and then you get in front and you understand that people are fighting, fighting for main. There's usually going to be pe more people on site on B than there is on A. Um, usually very common to see kind of like a one, 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 even a one here sometimes with a relurk. Um, or you'll see, you know, this person here will be here. So these two are, this guy's kind of swinging on contact for this guy. And then these guys are playing high, low here back, right. And maybe they're, they're angled out looking at this angle as well. Okay. So retaking on B, if you can stall the choke and fight for it and you have good numbers and you have good counter util, I don't recommend playing retake B. I would much rather we fight for B than uh, I would for A. I'd much rather play retake on A and kind of hold on to ramp control and and flank them and then go for kind of a pinch here. Um, and then on B, I would much rather try my best to util this tiny choke, make sure that we have some type of info on the line with this jump spot or this dim, deep info B main. And like I said, if we have B main control early, if we decide we want to one way this as Omen and get control of this, if people go for a B split, we just hold on to this B main space and our team will just heavy retake through this way, right? Um, and and that, that's really how you want to play it. Um, you could also retake through Z. So you could do like three people out spawn. One person is in B main and one person is late Z. That's going to kind of get this, this lurker and be having, um, or that might be playing the spike that's planted here. Okay. That's pretty much it from a macro perspective on split defense. Um, so just to recap, deny the, ch try to get some type of B main control, or at least fake like you're getting it. Deny the mid choke early with Viper or Raze or whoever. Make sure we're trying to trying to read how much util is used by the enemy team in the round, how much remaining util they have left for the execute on the sites. If they don't have a ton of util left, we fall back off of our 50-50 angles that we're trying to or the chokes that we're trying to defend, and we try to go for kills and kill zones. Um, as opposed to taking 50-50 fights, especially, especially, especially if we're up numbers. Um, one thing that I see way too much from pro play is just people just losing rounds that are already won for them, uh, because they're, they're just making fundamental, fundamental mistakes on taking good fights and bad fights. Okay. You want to always get the first kill with your brain, second kill with your aim, if you can. Okay. And being up numbers and fighting people in kill zones are really what are going to make that easy for you as a team. And then the last thing is understanding how you want to retake on a we want to hold on to ramps control a majority of the time, unless we have our teammates nested on site. If our teammates are on site, we could maybe try to flood with them if we want to. Um, just You just have to read the situation, retake through ramp, because then we're going to go for a pinched retake here or here. Um, and then on B, uh, try to fight more for the site. If you do have to play retake, let's try to maintain some type of B main control as our B player and fight this person that's likely splitting by themselves. Okay. That's pretty much it for defense split. Uh, if you guys have any questions, I'm sure there's things that I've missed. Um, but but yeah, that, that's that's the general, like the gist of it, okay? Now let's talk about attack, okay? So what I talk about on defense will naturally be, it, the opposite of it will be an import, important on attack. So from a macro perspective, what we want to do is we want to get control of this area, this area, or the you know, this area, these are the big, the big areas of the map for us that, that mean a lot. Okay. Now there are two areas that are connected in a sense, uh, that generally will complement each other. Okay. So if you go across ramps quick, you know, it makes sense for you to have one to two people trying to go up mid at the same time, or maybe slightly after, because you want to be able to pinch. Right. Does that make sense? B main control is not always the biggest thing to die for. If you can get it, you you oftentimes you can get B main super early and you can reset. And once you have control in the in the early round, it's really hard for teams to kind of retake it without using a ton of util. So a lot of times what you'll see is with this comp, let me just bring up the comp again. You'll see Cypher towards A, you'll see Viper B, and what Viper will do is just use one of her mollies here. Uh, sometimes you'll see, you'll see this kind of like this wall that helps the cipher and then they'll do like a lurk orb here. Something like this is common. Um, another thing that's common is like doing the B lurk wall, either this or this, um, and getting B main control. Okay. And this, this combo here is Viper is very, very strong. You deny them because you, you deny them 
this line early, control would be main unless they omen TP, right? And if they start doing that, guess what? Bring your duelist and your your omen, your duelist and your sky or whatever over, and you shit on this guy super quick. But then you also deny this deep, deep jump spot, okay? So you make this B player's life hell, okay? Because what did I say on, on defense that was super strong? Control B main, right? And then get this kind of line, get this info line so you can stall out the choke before they get out the choke. This orb makes it so that people can get out the choke super easy, right? And honestly, the, the wall plus the orb up together or even using an omen smoke with this wall is super strong because one, it keeps the wall up longer. The omen smoke denies vision. And then you can kind of just contact out with it, to be honest. Um, but yeah, so that's how I would start the rounds, uh, you know, this way. And then your cypher is kind of doing your lurk across A, getting info, either doing the early cam like this, trying to spot if somebody's going across or breaking the cam. Uh, and their job is kind of just to cross and keep people honest on A. That's your job as a lurker. Keep people honest, deny vision, create the question mark that you might be doing something because when you create a question mark that you might be doing something, guess what? Teams will hit you with the R&R. &R. They respect and they rotate, okay? When pe people hit you with the R&R, &R, that's when you can kind of do this push-pull pivot bullshit that I'm talking about. Um, and and you, you kind of find entrance to sites that have less people on it than you have entering it, okay? So that's kind of the name of, name of the game here from the start of the round. Now you can flip these. You can go like this and you can go Cypher B and Cypher can cam early like here, you know, to kind of clear the Omen TP. And then if there's nothing, you can walk in. Um, you can have Sky Flash early, whatever. And then we're working towards mid, okay? But what we're doing here is we're prioritizing the idea of getting B main control. We're prioritizing the idea of creating a question mark on A with this orb and this wall paired together, right? Or maybe we want to do this one and we do this, okay? And then in mid, we are trying to bait out the Viper Mollies, okay? Now, we always want to have this, this understanding of util trade and optimal, making sure that we have optimal util in the round. So oftentimes, these Viper players are super skittish, right? And so if you throw a Sky Flash mail and you throw a Roomba and you put a couple shots through the orb, a lot of the times they're going to blow Molly. And if you can trade one recharge, well, not a rechargeable flash anymore, but one flash in a Roomba for a Viper Molly, even though it doesn't, it doesn't make sense for you on a economic, uh, an economical standpoint, it's still worth it because of the way that the map works out. Okay. And like being stalled by Viper Mollies, the Viper Molly is so strong on this map, all, all maps, to be honest. But if you can bait out these Mollies quickly in the round, and then sometimes find ways to quickly take control of this entire area. It gives you the potential to push pull pivot, like I've talked about before. And then you have like these kind of info denial. You know, if you get control of here, you know, you put a lot of pressure on on this A guy by putting your wall up five seconds after, right? And then, you know, you could make noise going towards vent and then your Viper could already be walking back towards B and then your Cypher is getting ready to take the timing. And then one person's just sitting in mail. And one really common thing, and maybe something that isn't talked about too much is this idea of like inserting people on your default, uh, because it, it helps you listen to rotations, especially on this map. Another map is like Haven. Haven was really, really big with this, but you can kind of say the same thing on, on all maps is inserting people on these defaults in spots that are super, super solid, that can hear the rotations, because when you hear rotations, it, it prompts the lurk timings for your teammates, okay? So let's just use this example in mid. If we mid default early, super early, and we notice that the Viper is doing a really good job of not being, uh, of, of not biting on our fake util, and he's stalling the mollies out in mid, okay? We go for a fast mid, we say, fuck it. We're, or excuse my language, we say, you know what? You know what, bucko? Uh, we're going to go into vents fast because we don't think you're going to molly us back. We don't think you're going to counter molly us, right? Boom, we take control of vents. Boom, we take control of mail. Instantly in the round, we get somebody parked in this corner right here like a rat, okay? Peter Pettigrew in the corner right here just chilling, okay? And now what do we do? We put the wall up over at A, right? Maybe my sky goes back towards A like this and goes and dogs across ramp and then my viper goes back towards B. And then my raise is up, my raise or whoever, my omen player is up here and they throw a flash off the dog 
and then we instantly go this this person's listening and they say oh two people rotated yo b's open b open or one b max right now these two people over at b can take this 2v1 on this guy at b site and now we have this guy lurking up taking the timing and he can get kills here early you know we can get these kills and then leave and then this guy can late lurk behind sorry god i'm so many squigglies um but there's so many things that you can do if you get fast control of these areas, okay? Similarly to mid, if you get control of ramps super, super early, it makes the rounds really uncomfortable for people as well because what do you do? When you get access to this choke and being able to pass it, you can go this way, you can go this way, you can split this way. And when you go this way, what can you do? You can have people go this way and this way. So now you have like kind of a, a two-pronged pinch on mid that turns into a B split. And on rounds where you go across fast ramp, it's very common to see, you know, teams go across with three here. They insert a lurk here, right? Even sometimes here where they can listen to the rotations, right? So you have three people here. One person goes vents. Two person, two people go vents. You insert here or insert here. Now you have one person in mid and you have one person B main. And you go, you go up B main. And this person over here is calling rotations, telling your teammates, okay, yo, yo, actually, yo, two people are going to B. Let's go back A right? And then at that point, maybe this person B is just applying a little bit of pressure to keep people here. And then you go back into an A hit. You know what I mean? So really, that's the name of the game on attack um, is figuring out ways to kind of get control of these three areas and understanding what the enemy team will try to do as a response to losing control of an area. Okay. So this is the, my next my next point. Sorry, that's a bad one. So what what is the enemy team going to do as a response if I get control of mid? Okay, understanding that and having a team discussion and having ways to play around that info and kind of have ways to push them back or sell fakes or just push, pull, pivot, like I said before. And then... And then understanding how we're going to do that same thing by getting ramps control. So let me talk about that briefly. If you get control of mid, like vents and mail, generally you're going to see people playing from here. You're going to see a smoke B main. You're going to see people playing like here or even like here, here, even spotting like this. So they play super far back. But it's very easy to put pressure by smoking Z like this, raise nading here, Roombaing hell or whatever, right? And they kind of have to respect you and fall back into more nested spots like this or this or even staying in hell, right? Once they lose vision of the of you, it's very easy for you to push, pull, pivot and kind of do this as a solo player sometimes, okay? And while you're doing this, you have this internal discipline to not cross this line because you're not going for kills. Your job here as a duelist, the, the, it's it's funny. The job of the duelist on this map is is different than most others, unless you're going for fast execs. The job of the duelist is to actually hold rotations the same way that kind of a lurker would in the mid round. It's kind of it's it's kind of unique, and that's one reason why I like the map. Um, but it, you know what I mean? Like your job here in B Heaven is to push to apply pressure, but not go for kills. I mean, you can go for kills, but you're not to die. You're not to overextend and die, which is generally what duelists end up doing. Um, Good ones understand that their 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 role in the in the round is dynamic, right? In rounds where I need to apply pressure and stay alive, I'm not really going for kills. I'm just trying to throw utel, shoot my gun around, be annoying, push people off, and scare them, right? And people, especially on defense, teams have a natural instinct to want to rotate to where duelist players are and where initiate initiator players are, right? So as a duelist, if you are very very disciplined and you can apply pressure without dying. It really sets your team up for success when they're going back on this kind of push pull pivot thing, right? So that's how they would approach losing control of mid. Generally, you'll see this vent player fall off. You'll see this male player fall off to Z or Rafter. And at that point, it's really easy for you to push pull pivot, put some shots into the smoke, make this guy's life difficult. He he dips and plays spawn. And now they're playing for the hell drop. You know, we have the one here and one here. Um, and then they have a pillar player, okay? Now, when you get people to nest like this, it's super easy to push, pull, pivot, like I was saying, okay? That's what we want. Now, let's talk about the other control. If you have control of ramps here, generally, you're going to see people, you know, 
fall to places like this that can be really, really risky because if you get them to fall for this and you have good util here, nade, rip, molly, they can swing out into you and die or they swing and drop hell. And if they drop hell, you just kind of rush and you kill them. Um, but if you get control of ramps, another option is that you'll see is you'll see people leave to mid, pop their viper orb up and they'll rotate back through here. Um, you'll see people kind of go for jump spots here. You'll see people go for holding this line or you'll see people just completely fall off and play screens, double screens or one screen, one elbow or get one elbow and then play nested on site. And again, when we get people nested on site, one thing that's really good is the amount of time that it takes for them to rotate from bomb site to bomb site enhances drastically, right? They lose vision on numbers. They don't know how many people are still in an area. It makes it really easy for you to apply pressure without being at risk of dying. And guess what? You're making the life easier for your teammates again. So if you're a raised player in B Heaven that's just applying pressure, maybe you rip a nade here. You, you know, you peek and take a couple shots into the map, or maybe you just sit close to the smoke and hold this, or you're kind of just jiggling and being annoying, putting in damage here uh, without the intention of dying. And then you go and you meet your teammates back, and you can go back B main, and then they're already at B Heaven, right? So that's kind of the name of the game on split defense or attack. Uh, just to recap everything, I'm going to keep this video. I'm going to pretty much end it here but just to recap everything try to establish some type of b main control and understand if the especially if the enemy team is taking control of it early if they aren't taking control of it early you don't need to worry about it too much make sure that we have ways of taking mid quickly especially if the viper is being greedy with the mollies um and then on a when we go across fast ramp understand that people are usually falling back into more nested spots um, understanding how we can abuse that and kind of apply pressure without dying and then splitting going back vents. Really, it's the name of the game is kind of mid control and top ramp control and then figuring out ways to push pull pivot off of that and create lurk timings for our people on the extremities. And then the last thing, guys, is just a, just a reminder to try this whole idea of inserting uh, on a default. If your team is getting mid control super, super easily, you can call for this super quickly. Your raise satchels up. We smoke ma event. I'm going to get here, and then you guys make noise going vents. We This raise is waiting for reclear, calling the rotations over this way. Maybe the viper wall goes up, or we do this viper wall, and then our cypher and our viper are taking the B timing on this guy. Raise goes and tries to fight this guy B heaven while he's looking this way. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's a very strategic map, and it's actually, once you start understanding how people play it at a really high level, it's actually turned into my favorite favorite map to watch i think at a high level i actually might think i might consider doing a sentinels vod review because i think right now they're the best team in the world at playing this map um and i think it's really because they they understand this idea of early round denial of these areas but then later round they're pivoting into more nested setups that have a heavy heavy emphasis on these kill zones and they're also really good at winning fights like here. Like Zekin's a god and Tens is a god at just killing people here, right? And they're really good at nesting on sites and playing off of each other. Um, but what makes that super easy is the fact that they're doing a good job of baiting out the utility and denying space early um, on defense, okay? I'm sure I missed stuff. Um, though, okay, one more thing on attack. Try to bait out Viper utility early. Um... And always try to threaten threaten control of B main. Create a question mark on A with your lurk. Make sure you're continuously popping your Viper wall up or using your cages. Um, and really understand that pressuring spots to keep people from rotating is the name of the game on split. Because, hey, guess what? Guess what? It's in the title of the map. The key to this is split. You got to split on the map. Be heaven split. Boom. Split the defense, number one, but then also split through different chokes that you achieve early on in the round by taking control of mid and top ramp. Um, yeah, that's going to be it, guys. Thank you so much for all the support. Um, any questions or suggestions, again, drop them in the comments. We're getting closer to that 1,000 followers, um, Mark. That's kind of my initial goal that I was that I set out. I thought it, I thought it was going to take me way longer than it has, to be honest. Uh, so we're trending in the right direction. I am going to look into potentially working with an editor uh, to make things more enjoyable for you guys. Maybe I'll have like a cooler intro or I'm like shaving my bald head or doing something stupid. Um, but then also maybe getting into YouTube shorts, showing you guys maybe some more um, agent specific stuff, uh, like just quick cypher setups or viper setups. 
uh, killjoy setups, things of that nature, um, or cool rounds that maybe just single round breakdowns that I see in pro games. And then the other thing that I want to start doing is kind of like uh, how pros are playing. So like how Ethan plays KO on Ascent, for example, or how Zelsus plays Viper on Split, how John QT plays Cypher on, on Split yada 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 right and then kind of it's hard to get that that straight up footage of them playing that's impossible to get but what i can do is i can kind of watch on the mini map and i, I understand what they're doing in the moment i shift show you the clip i shift out show you guys in game what what lineup they use what molly they use and kind of the reasoning behind their play um and then how it how the rest of the team setup supports that to kind of draw logical connections um between it, it actually like the global setup on defense or on attack Okay. Um, anyways, thank you so much for the support. Hope you guys have a great rest of the day. See you in the next one.